Since 2007, there have been approximately 1 million public housing units housing 1.8 million people in the United States. It can be debilitating for tenants who feel trapped in public housing without the knowledge or ability to change their situation. While many charities and nonprofits help people in public housing, a new approach should be considered. Using an existing business model that has been proven to work, people in public housing can have a ladder out of the abyss of poverty. In Evansville, Indiana, private and public sector leaders should pilot a nonprofit program for the Fulton Square Apartments that facilitates pairing successful people of all diversities with individual families to mentor on financial and life decisions. The public housing system is a vital part of government assistance that can prevent homelessness, allow people to live in affordable housing, and offer a relatively safe environment for children. However, public housing only goes halfway to solving the problem, treating the issue of poverty like a doctor treats a terminal patient focusing on keeping them as comfortable as possible while giving up hope of genuinely solving the problem. However, offering the families of public housing the opportunity to have an individual mentor walk with them through their life decisions weekly will turn the concept of public housing from a hammock that keeps people comfortable while remaining in their situation into a springboard for getting out of poverty. In Indiana, Evansville has a very high percentage of people living below the poverty line compared to other cities. Some will argue that is due to an exodus to neighboring communities making up the greater tri-state area, though most towns of any size have a certain amount of suburban flight to the outskirts. In a city of approximately 176,000 people, 888 public housing units house close to 2,000 people. Fulton Square Apartments is a community of 110 of those units on Evansville's northwest side. The public housing project has existed for decades, always remained full, and has slowly decayed over the years. While many of Fulton Square's tenants have remained stuck for years in a system that offers no path out. On the corner next to the Fulton Square apartments, the primary charity involved in the neighborhood is a Salvation Army facility. The Salvation Army provides necessities to those who apply and qualify and will assist with an electric bill or provide a meal when necessary. While this is a noble effort the Salvation Army has provided nationwide for decades, it will not offer anyone the tools to escape their situation permanently. A second component needs to be implemented with a private-slash-public partnership that will allow the tenants of Fulton Square to raise their quality of life. The first step of this process is creating the framework that will evolve into a non-profit mentoring organization. One organization uniquely qualified to take these initial steps is Leadership Everyone, LE a local nonprofit made up of public and private industry leaders with hundreds of alumni in the community. Ali teaches the principles of servant leadership during a three-day retreat where people learn their leadership strengths, how to better communicate with others, and the value of volunteerism. Once graduated from the retreat, the alumni are encouraged to stay involved by volunteering for projects that help the community. LE is often asked to facilitate community meetings to allow the residents to have their voices heard in creating a solution for proposed city projects, like a proposed bike path route through the city that affects street widening and neighborhood property lines. Hosting and facilitating these types of community meetings will give the families of Fulton Square an opportunity for their input into the goals and framework of the mentoring program. The membership of LE will also be a great pool of potential volunteer mentors to initiate the program in Fulton Square. Big Brothers slash Big Sisters nonprofit organization pairs adults willing to dedicate their time with underprivileged kids. Founded in 1977, with roots back to 1907, the mentoring program develops friendships between people who have successfully navigated the pitfalls of youth with kids who need that guidance. The program has been wildly successful for many years, with 72% of mentees attending college. The one-on-one -on -one aspect, allows the mentor to become invested in the mentee's progress, which is the secret sauce of success. This business model creates bonds between people who have succeeded and those who could use a hand up that could be used as a template for helping people move beyond public housing to financial self-sufficiency. To maximize the mentor pool of volunteers, a different way of looking at charity needs to occur. Since the time of the pilgrims, giving charity or assistance to those who need help has been expected by social norms to be done with piety and modesty. To openly take credit is seen as crass or self-serving and thereby less noble. This is a self-destructive philosophy for charities nationwide, voluntarily reducing the number of potential donors and volunteers. 
It is human nature to gravitate to rewards for labor and time spent on any project. A much larger pool of volunteers will get involved if financial and community recognition opportunities are available. Partnering with local software developers and retail businesses can create an app for the mentors to receive rewards in the form of discounts or cash. With tiers based on the mentee's success, the city government can offer tax incentives to successful mentors when the mentee achieves homeownership. The mentor organization should create public recognition campaigns for the mentor and mentee as the individual family achieves success. Many in public office will argue that more public housing is needed and that government resources should be spent with these goals in mind. Congressman David Price of North Carolina has written a bill that has money for more vouchers to help renters pay rent and funding to repair public housing. But he says there is also money to build a lot more affordable housing. The congressman's intentions are coming from a good place, though this approach will only create a larger population of trapped people in long-term poverty. The goal should be to reduce the need for public housing for current residents and open vacancies for those trying to get in who will, in turn, be offered mentoring to ensure that public housing is a short-term fix. Another counter-argument is that people who have been in public housing for an extended period and who have adjusted to that life will resist any forced attempt to change their lifestyle. This will be a factor in the early implementation of the program, and anyone not interested in receiving the mentoring should not be forced to participate. One way the government can assist families in achieving this goal will be by changing the existing regulations, allowing people to stair-step out of public housing financially. One of the most significant barriers to upward mobility is regulating how much someone can earn while living in public housing. A family can't escape if they can't build a nest egg or advance in a career. The city and state governments should rewrite the regulations so that a tenant's rent is gradually modified as they start to make more money and not just remove them from the housing for crossing a financial line that a bureaucrat indiscriminately made up. Poverty has existed almost since the dawn of man, so it is folly to assume it will be fixed within a generation. After decades of status quo thinking about poverty, it is time to look at the problem from another angle. The experience and knowledge of successful people can be a beacon that guides those in need to a more fulfilled life. It will take generations to eliminate poverty in America, and lots of obstacles along the way will challenge the path forward. However, every family's success is a victory, and the individual accomplishments will build on one another. Like a snowball, it will continue to grow and become larger for as long as the people in the program continue to be invested in its success. By changing the goals of poverty-related charity from just keeping people comfortable to setting a course out of their situation, we can start reducing the number of people who need public housing and work towards solving poverty one family at a time.